Hey everybody, how's it going? And welcome to the very first installment of Logo Wednesday. The show where I critique the evolution of a logo, of a company, or organization, or anything of that matter. Uh, every Wednesday is when it's uploaded. And the very first series of logos we're going to be looking at uh, is of course going to be my favorite store, Zellers. Now I'm sure not all of you know what Zellers is, even though my most viewed video is about Zellers. Uh, I'll, I'll let you in on a little bit. So Zellers was a Canadian retail store. In fact, I would assume was the biggest one, or at least in its category was. At, at one point, it got really big, you know, and I mean, I wouldn't necessarily call it, I don't know if I would necessarily call it like a Canadian treasure or anything, but it, it became pretty popular. Maybe it's because it was the only option, but it, it, it got very big. Uh, reported 350 stores, thanks to Wikipedia. Yeah, so it was pretty cool, you know, it was a cool store, and there wasn't really any just like it, or at least by the turn of the 90s, there wasn't, you know, it was really the only one, and it was the biggest one. So it was Canada's retail store, in a sense, I guess you could say. But then, of course, I'm sure you probably know, you might not, I don't really know, I'm just a person, but uh, Zellers was kind of, you know, doing its thing, and then Walmart came in and uh, punched Zellers, probably more than once. Basically, Walmart was like, hey, uh, Walmart was a big store in the U.S., and when it came to Canada, you know, it, it, they did very well. Uh, I don't necessarily know every reason. I'll have to look more into that. Zellers could not compete. And, of course, Target tried it, and, I mean, they did knock more Zellers stores out, but uh, they they failed in, in, the, in the long run. And I guess it just kind of proves that just because, you know, a big guy does it doesn't mean necessarily that it's easy. You know, there's a lot that goes into moving your business into other countries. Because other countries, well, they do things differently. But anyway, so Zellers does not exist anymore. The last two locations that were liquidation centers for home outfitters in the Bay closed in early 2020. And I got to see it. So anyway, Zellers uh, does not exist. Uh, but um, that does not stop me from liking it. So anyway, let's get into the video. Alright, so Zellers was created in 1931 by, by Walter P. Zeller. That's pretty cool. Walter Philip Zeller was born in Kitchener, Ontario. So that's pretty sweet. But anyway, we're not, we're not talking about, I mean, that's for a different day, you know. Let's talk about the logo. So the very first logo that shows up on Logopedia, which is what I'm using, Thank you everybody who uh, supports Logopedia. It's a, it's a good website. I, I, I like looking at it. The first one is, um, it's about what you would expect, I think. For a retail store in the early 19th century, you cannot expect um, radical designs, especially when you're starting off and you just need a logo. So, of course, all capital letters, black and white, because this was probably taken from like a newspaper or a magazine. Uh, and also, color is expensive. But I would have to say that the logo overall is pretty good. Uh, it's pretty fair. Uh, it says right here, a Canadian chain of thrift stores, which I don't think really represented it in the future. Uh, necessarily, but uh, yeah, I guess when it started it was a thrift store. The font is pretty cool. It's it's a pretty cool font. It's pretty nice. I mean, but again, it's it's following a trend, you know, this sort of giant buildings, and then you got just this little thing. Like now, we really, we have these, um, our buildings are sort of taking on a completely different look. And of course they've evolved over time, but the logo is now much more important. But back then it was just like, yeah, this is Zellers. I don't really have a rating for it. I don't know if I should do a rating system or something. Uh, but I guess we'll do it for this episode. Um, I'll give it a... 
7. No, I'll give it an 8. It, it, I don't think it can get any higher because, it, again, it's it's not doing anything. But then again, should it? It's not reaching any new ground, but at the end of the day, I, I wouldn't expect it to. So let's give it an 8. Pretty good. So Logopedia does not know when this logo went out of use, sometime in the 1940s. But it, at some point in that time, they changed it to this one. Um... Pretty good as well. It's really important to realize, like, timing. Because obviously a logo like this now is not really anything special. It's kind of mundane, but at the time, this was expected. So I, I gotta give them props for at least sticking to a formula and not going too overboard. Retailers to thrifty Canadians. So I guess for a while they were like, hey guys, you thrifty? It's pretty good. It's a different font, which is interesting that they would do that, you know. I guess it was a common thing at the time. I think now, you know, companies try to stick to a certain font, but I'm seeing a Fall Guys ad. <laughs> That's a game. I think now we really try and keep the fonts the same, you know, sometimes we'll do a little Whoa, look, the A has more of a swoop, but I think back then it was like, I don't, I don't know, give it a new font, give it copper plate, hey, give it an abbreviation on Calibri or something. But I think it's pretty fair, I mean, again, this is, you know, very, very much a newsprint sort of thing. I don't know necessarily if I would see this on the actual building. Probably not, because it, it only lasted a few years, because when this logo ended, it was 1947. But overall, pretty good. Uh, I don't think it's as good, necessarily. I think it's pretty cool, but I don't think... I see some cool shadows, kind of giving a 3D effect, which is kind of cool. It's kind of cool. Okay, you know what, I think, I think I'll give it a 7.5. I don't think it's as attractive as the first one. I think this the first one is a little bit better, but what's important to note is, you know, it's changing times. You know, we're getting into the 50s. It's things are changing. Anyway, but yeah, I think 7.5 or 7, you know, around that area. <laughs> okay, all right, so the third one, this is what it looks like. Uh, the 1947 is when we got uh, this baby. Alright, um, yes, so this is very much a magazine, like, when I think of a logo in, like, a 1950s or 1960s magazine, I can't think of a better one than this one. Uh, I guess now this would kind of look like an air freshener sort of logo. Shh, Zellers. Bring your home. Obviously, I'm, I am way after this time period. So I'm kind of, especially with the, the two that I'm seeing right now, this one and the previous one, I'm struggling to like think like this was on a building, necessarily. I don't know, it's a little strange, but I, I think it is a good logo. Again, we're doing a new font, this is sort of a, a cursive style font, except for that Z. That's not a, that's not a, that's not a cursive Z, but, or Z. I was taught Z, but I think I'm supposed to say Z. Retailers. To, wait, it says the same thing. Okay. Alright, so they're sticking with the little motto. I think they have had some slogans, but okay, alright. So I guess on their logo they have a motto. Now it's Retailers to Thrifty Canadians. But anyway, this one's a pretty cool one. Again, we're still in the black and white era, which I guess is fine. I guess that's cool, but we still kind of. I think I think we're 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 in lowercase letter territory now. This is the Z. Z or what? I don't, I don't know. But that the that letter is uppercase. But the other ones appear to be lowercase. I'd give it an eight. I think I'll give it an eight. Uh, again, actually no. I, I'm gonna give it an eight point five. I think it's giving Zellers a new light, and I think the font is pretty attractive. I think the logo, like I don't know what the swoopy thing, I don't know what that is. It's pretty nice. I like it. I think I'm gonna give it a nine. A nine. 
Uh, it would be a 10 if it had a little dash of color. But anyway, 1962. This chair, I, I, I don't think I should use this chair anymore, but 1962 is when this logo decided to skedaddle. And we got... This one. Okay, so... Yeah. So this one's interesting. Um, I... I... If there was any logo that looked like the Pepsi logo, it would have to be this one. This looks like it's on a bottle cap. Which... is not a terrible thing, I don't think, but... I don't know, like, where this is going. I, I, again, these are in, like, catalogs and magazines and stuff like that, where they're, like, just showing a logo. I... I don't know. It's... It's not really doing it for me. The wavy Z... Z, or whatever. I don't know. It's, it's a little weird. It's a little off-putting. Just a little bit. Is it a bad logo? I don't know. My mind is starting to get a little confused. The Z, the more I'm looking at it, and that weird little line in the middle is making it look kind of like a 7. I know there's like a little part off to the side, but it's making it look like a 7. That's kind of strange. We're still in black and white. Or are we? We are not. We are not. As you can see, look at that. There's a green variant. Wow. It says Zellers at the bottom. But of course, just having a logo is not really good enough, especially if your logo is just, just a Z. Z. You know, your logo is just a letter, which is not very good. So they were like, well, we gotta get some words. We gotta get some letters. They brought up this thing. I think it looks pretty cool. Finally, we have the red color. Uh, I guess they picked it because it's Canada's color, which is actually kind of interesting because on February 15th, 1965, uh, Canada's flag changed to what we have pretty much today. And that's kind of interesting because I'm assuming this font and, and this, this font typeface sort of logo did not exist in 1962. I think it was brought up a few years later and yeah, I, I, I would have to believe that, you know, it was to represent Canada. Because that's pretty easy to do, you know? Just to be like, hey, yeah, uh, this is our logo. Okay, okay. But I think it's pretty cool. It does remind me, I think the font is the main thing. It's kind of re reminding me of a pharmacy, which I don't know if Zellers had a pharmacy by this point. They probably did. Pretty cool. I'm gonna, I'm gonna rank first just the logo. And then the font. We're not doing the color variant. That's I, I don't add I, I don't know. So we're doing first the logo. Uh, I'm gonna give it a five. Now I don't know everything about it. There could be a reason why it's here, but I'm going to be honest. It's not a terrible logo. You know what? I'll give it a six. I'll give it a six. I feel like that line in the middle, although it's kind of annoying, it's kind of unique, and I think uniqueness at this point in time is, you know, should be accepted to an, to an extent. So I think, yeah, I'll give that a six. As for the font one, I'm going to give it, I'll give it a seven. Because yes, it is giving us the red, you know, and that's cool and all, and you know, it is a font one, which means you can tell what the company's called. It's not that interesting. Pretty bland. It's a pretty bland font. Yes, a six. And a seven. That's, that's it. But when 1975 rolls around, Zellers is like, we've got a problem. We haven't changed our logo in 13 years. Oh, what am I looking at? Well, I'm looking at the logo we've created. This is it. This one is such a sharp contrast from the one previous. Especially if we're looking at just the logo, you're probably thinking to yourself, like, what, what do we, what happened? It employs, I would assume, a similar red, but it is on this very, very cool angle. And I may be lying. I could, I, I probably don't know. 
but I would have to assume that this is a pretty neat, unique design. The fact that it's on an angle is just like, like it's slanted, but also, you know, kind of, like, you know, you, you rotated it, but then you also kind of put like italics on it. It's really interesting. I gotta say, it's attractive. It catches your eye very quickly. And that's kind of hard to do with fonts, you know, because a logo, yeah, it'll catch your, your eye very quickly. But what if you're not known enough? Well, then you can't really use a logo because people are gonna be like, hey, what's that company? Well, I don't know, but it has a cool uh, fish on it. It's good. It really is. It's a really good font. I don't know where this font comes from, but it, is. it does somewhat resemble the previous one, you know? And I think that's kind of cool. The logo just kind of works. It kind of just confuses your brain a lot and but you don't even really care that it's confusing it's just it just follows through i've tried to like you know do different like fonts and stuff like that like just kind of like draw stuff and it is hard to do that and the fact that this font just kind of goes so smoothly it's it's really nice this chair is i'm going to give this zeller's logo a 9.5. I'll give it a 10, actually. Then I'll give it a 9.5. So 1975. Well, what about 2000? That's right. 2000. The new century. Wait, no, the, the new millennium, not century. Well, it is a new century, but it's also a new millennium. You can't be using old logos like these. You gotta be using new high-tech logos. Logos that speak to you in techie ways. They make you feel so smart. But also dumb. Well, we didn't get a new logo in 2000, but this logo did hit the hay sack. In 1994 is when we got a new logo. Six years before the new millennium, this one may look the same. <laughs> in fact, I think on first glance, you may not be able to tell the difference. But in due time, you will. You will notice that this one uh, sort of relaxes on the wham. Because hey, you know, at first it was like, whoa, okay, all right, ah, Zellers. Of course, I think with what's important to note is the old one, while it is amazing in all its glory, yeah, it's it's pretty it's 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 pretty on an angle, like it. Once you notice it, you're like, oh no, what happened? I can imagine it being a, a little hard to design this sign for a store because if it's bending down so much, you might have to make the building really tall. This one is a lot more relaxed and you know, it's, it's still bent, like it's still kind of on an angle, but it's a lot more of a slope rather than a steep hill, which I think is nice. The color, as I'm seeing it right now, appears to be a slight bit darker, so it could be a darker shade of red. But of course, that doesn't really matter too much. It could be any shade of... And I really... Did people really notice? Probably not. They probably just did this, you know, for the reason I said. Maybe another... I don't know, uh, ten reasons. I don't really know, but... There are small differences that you will see, you know, you see that the R is no longer connected to the S. A little further apart. The E's are kind of shaped a little different. I can't really describe it completely, but I'll say this. The old E's look happy. The new ones look a little too happy. Not a bad, that doesn't affect the logo, I'm just, you know, trying to describe the E, the difference in the letter E. I am hungry. Overall, I don't think anybody would have noticed the difference, but I do think it is an improvement. Which is why I gave the, the previous one, the amazing one, I gave it a 9.5. Because this one, I think, definitely deserves the 10 spot. Because I think it just, it works better as a building and... It just, it works. Also for a website. I know a lot of companies now, they're doing, hey, let's make our logo really simple. Simple logos all around. Hey, everybody, come around and see our simple logo. I think this is a much better fix. Just 
make it fit into a box better. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's a good fix. I think it's a smart fix. Just make it fit into a box. So then people, when they want to drag and, you know, click and drag your logo all over the place, they can do it a lot easier because now it's just like this. Instead of like that, yeah, it's, it's a lot better. It, it's, it's nice. They used this logo as a company until 2013. And uh, for stores-wise, 2020 is when it ended. You know, I never really thought about the fact that 2020 pretty much started off with Zellers kicking the bucket. And I don't really know how to think about that. At the end of the day, I made a video. This is another video about Zellers. And maybe one day I'll make another one. Anyway, well that's the history of uh, Zellers' logos. I want to thank Logopedia for existing. Uh, I may actually consider getting an account. I don't know how much I'll contribute to Logopedia, but do check it out. It is an insane website. Insane Wikia page. There's, they got so many. There's some that they don't have. Westcott. Like, for instance, you know the rule of company Westcott? Well, they don't have a page yet. You got any, Im any images or anything, you can put them on the Logopedia. Just create an account and do it, I guess. Thank you all for watching. Thank you all for watching this video. And I'll see you all next Wednesday. I'm flying out.